What's up guys, welcome to today's video. So on the video today, what we're gonna focus on, I'm gonna do a two for one. I'm gonna do a cut and I'm gonna do a color. It's gonna be a nice symmetrical layered haircut with a versatile bang. What I mean by a versatile bang is basically, it's gonna be a bang that they can wear to the left, to the right, or straight down the center. It's gonna be the perfect thing for you to use in the salon right away. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to color that haircut because it's one thing to have a versatile bang, but you have gotta be able to match it with a color technique that's gonna work in all those different directions as well and still look similar no matter what you do. So can't wait to show you guys this technique. I got a box in the mail from Joyco. They sent me their new glow and gorgeous series. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna create some warmth, which is perfect for uh, the fall season, which is what we're going into now. So I wanna create some warmer tones. We're gonna use natural warm level sixes. We're gonna use natural warm level eights. We're gonna go in, we're gonna do a lightning technique. We're gonna do a toning technique. This video is packed. In under 20 minutes, you're gonna learn so much. So very, very excited to showcase all this stuff for you guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, before you watch any further and hit that like button if you like the video and make sure you post a comment if you have a question below or if you just love the video, let me know that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's get started. Here we go. All right, guys, so we're gonna start off this technique. We wanna create symmetry uh, to start this whole thing. Really, the whole haircut is based on being symmetrical, not asymmetrical. So center parting to the high point of the head and then down to just right at the ear, really the top of the ear. So we're gonna have a slight diagonal forward in that sectioning. Notice how I comb all the little hairs right at the scalp, nice and tight. And then I twist everything uh, away and clip it. It's keeping everything nice and clean as we start off our sectioning in this cut. Same thing on the opposite side. So again, keeping it symmetrical. And then the overall goal of this cut is to not only have a nice symmetrical layering pattern, but also create a versatile fringe that's gonna allow you to, uh, your guests to either part on the left or right or the center. So really a nice uh, symmetrical feeling that is very versatile for the end result. So the last bit of the sectioning is pretty simple, diagonal back parting. It's gonna create a point right at the occipital bone and is going to uh, end in a triangle section right at the crown. So um, that's gonna section off that part as well. Thing that we're gonna be using in this cut is a straight razor. So this is something that you don't see a lot in my videos. I wanted to pull that out today, show you guys, you know, it's really, there's no difference in a a lot of the different razors that you're going to use. The thing I like about the straight razor is the precision aspect of it. Every single bit of that blade is going to cut the hair. So I'm using that. This is the Jatai, I believe is how you say it. Uh, feather razor, Plier feather razor. Um, cannot get this on freesaloneducation.com. I don't really care about that. Uh, so you can get it on the internet though. So if you want to check it out. Um, so basically what I did is I cut a straight line using about a half inch stroke of the razor. And then this is where it gets a little fun uh, in this technique. I didn't wanna cut a ton of layers in the bottom of the hair. I wanted it to be nice and thick. So what I'm doing is I'm just combing the hair vertical straight out from the head. And then I'm just tapping through with the razor creating invisible layers within the haircut. So I'm really just choosing how much layering I wanna put in. You could cut a straight line if you want all the layers. If you want just some, then you go in with just the tip blade of the feather uh, razor and you can get just subtle layers within the shape. So what I wanted to do is just remove a little bit of weight, create a little bit of movement on the bottom of that haircut. Uh, and that's the, that's the choice I made uh, using this razor. So you can see that movement that's happening, but still again, nice and thick uh, and everything came straight back from the head. Now I'm gonna let out that triangle section and this is where we're gonna start to really build in some layers. So I take a vertical section, we're gonna be working along the round of the head and I start from the guide, the guide comes from the bottom and I work my way up and I'm really working 90 degrees straight off the head or straight off the head, however you wanna say it. Um, and then I take a pie shape section and I shift. I'm moving with the head shape all the way around to the ear. That's gonna create round layering that follows the head shape and it's gonna create a lot of nice movement. So you can see nice high elevation, medium stroke with the razor. That's gonna give me a nice soft line. Uh, that's really the, the reason I chose to use a razor in this uh, haircut was I wanted that movement. I wanted those soft lines in the long hair uh, because 
sometimes when you cut blunt with a scissor, it's not as forgiving. Uh, what I love about a razor is it creates soft lines, but also precision at the same time. So you can almost see the roundness coming off the head uh, in that technique. Now we're moving into the side and the front of the head. Um, this is going to be, we're gonna work straight over the ear, taking our guide from the back. So you'll see, I pull that hair, I comb everything nice and tight to the front, pull everything straight out and I work from short to long. Now I'm following the round of the head. Also, you lose some density when you get to the side because there's not as much hair. So you're gonna start to see that shape start to work its way up the head. Um, I'm not keeping a strong line on the bottom, not thinking about that over uh, the outer perimeter of the haircut. I'm just, I want the outer perimeter to kind of follow the head shape and work its way up towards uh, that chin, her chin or her jawline. So working my way up, working the 90 degrees of the head, soft stroke with the razor, creating a soft line in the haircut and just working my way through, traveling guide all the way to the front. Another key thing I want you to, to see um, as I'm working on the head is you gotta know when to stop, right? So I wanna work on a fringe later. So you'll notice that I'm only gonna take Oh, not even gonna take any more sections. So right there, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna clip it. That's as far as I wanted to go. I got to the edge of the eyebrow. That's where I want my fringe to start. So I pause, I clip it, and now I work to the other side. Same exact thing on the opposite side, combing everything straight out, grabbing a guide from the back, and then working that medium stroke with the razor up the head shape 90 degrees out. and I'll work my way all the way up the head until I get to that fringe area again, and then I'll pause, and then we're gonna cut into the fringe after. All right, so we let out the fringe area. So this is pretty simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comb everything over to me on one side. I'm gonna determine the length that I want, and that's where I'm gonna start. So I'm creating that angle uh, on one side. So now it's gonna push that weight from the left hand side of her face over to the right hand side. Then I go in with the tip of that feather razor just to skinny it up a little bit, take out some of that weight. And then I do the same exact thing on the opposite side, keeping everything symmetrical, which is gonna allow her to go to either side on this haircut. Now going in and using the tip of the feather uh, razor is gonna lighten it up a little bit so it makes it a lot softer when she decides which side she wants to put her hair on. But you can see, you can work it back and forth whichever way you want. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow dry her hair. I'm gonna show you guys the end result, but I'm also gonna show you it with hair color because I'm gonna go into the hair color next. So if you wanna see that, stay tuned in this video. If you would rather uh, just do the haircut, then you can do that. This is the end result. You can see that fringe. This is off to one side. It would look the same on the other side or in the center. It would look beautiful that way as well. So very versatile layered haircut. Hope you guys like it. Now, if you're interested in the color, stay with me here. I'm going to walk you through that. All right, so we're gonna start off our color technique doing a zigzag parting right down the center. Now this haircut, we're basing the color off of the haircut. Um, that's kind of the way I wanna start doing these videos. Let me know if you like that. But um, I wanted to do the cut first and then show how I would color that cut. So we go in, I do a zigzag parting on the center part. We built the whole haircut off of a center part. I want this to be versatile. The whole haircut is based on having the client be able to push the hair either way. So I want a top, I wanna to color it so that it has that movement. So no matter how they put their hair, it's not gonna favor one way or the other. So I use the zigzag parting and I take the first bit of that triangle, I do a slice and then I tease that slice and I start painting. So I work my way through, I'm using Joyco Blonde Life Lightener uh, with 20 volume and I'm gonna put that on her hair first. Now lightening hair, is just the first step, right? Um, I think too much in the salon, we think of lightening as the final step uh, or a quick toner at the bowl. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to lighten her, get her light where I want her, and then go in and do a toning, a uh, little bit of shadowing, a little bit of lightness on the ends, but really soften that tone and bring it all together. So uh, taking each 
edge of the triangle. So I got the first triangle on that zigzag and then I take the next triangle. So you should see kind of a back and forth movement with these foils. Notice that the first one was that direction. The second one is the other direction. And now I'm taking one the opposite direction. So just working my way through that zigzag one foil at a time. Uh, this is a really simple technique, but it's really effective. It really pops some brightness in the top, but you don't know where that brightness is coming from. And that's what I wanted to create in this uh, color technique here. So again, working my way through that zigzag. Then when I get to the fringe, that's where we're gonna change things up because it's such a versatile fringe. You gotta be very careful of how you decide to color it. So just working through, notice how much I'm teasing that. <laughs> it's sped up so it looks a little funny, but I'm teasing it quite a bit because I want uh, an, as soft result as possible. If you want a little bit harsher result, a little bit more bold statement, then less teasing. If you want it softer, more teasing. Um, that's kind of the key to that. So notice I've only done, this is my fourth foil, uh, and then now I'm at the fringe. So it's pretty quick across the top. And then uh, now I'm gonna work slices all the way down, weaving, um, weaving and not teasing. So really, really fine weave in the front. And then I put the foil under, I paint that the lightener on, and then I'll work my way through. So pretty standard weave, but notice that I'm going kind of diagonal back with my parting. And I'm gonna work my way all the way to the front fringe. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm gonna stop talking, let you watch, and we'll work our way through this. So here's where things change just a little bit. When I get to that front hairline, I wanna be a little softer. I don't wanna go right to the scalp with my lightener. So I'll paint that a little bit more forward, you can see. And then I'm gonna use kind of a feathering, take it from balayage technique, where I just slightly paint towards the base and then get a little heavier towards the end. So I'm just trying to make it as soft as possible right around that front fringe area. So that's our first side. Now I'm gonna to move to the opposite side and do the exact same thing that way. So finishing up feather and painting right at the front fringe area. Now we're gonna switch up our technique again to create even a softer effect along the sides. So I take a slight diagonal forward parting, uh, about an inch thick section and I really tease that up like crazy and then I add that foil underneath and then I paint my Blonde Life Lightener right onto that just to pop some brightness on those ends. I don't really need it at the base. That's not really the goal with this cut. I uh, wanted a more lived in color for the sides. So just working my way up and I'll take one inch sections all the way through uh, until I end up with no hair at the end. So really popping that brightness on the ends there. Another quick tip is to make sure that you don't paint that lightener into the tease section too much because it's obviously bunched up there. So you might get a little spottiness in your end result. So just get right up to that teasing, but don't go too far in. Same thing on the opposite side. Last little touch that I do is I'll paint just a tad bit into the back of her hair so you'll see some featheredness, uh, featheredness, I don't think that's a word, uh, so I'll feather it through the back just to pop a little bit of lightness into the hair. Um, but here's the deal. So to me, and we're going to use the Natural Warm series from Joyco, I'll talk about that in a second, but for me, uh, the lightener is the driver that takes you to the party, right? The toner is the fun part. It's the part that really brings it to life. This is not a great look right now. This is just 
her lightened where I want her to be lightened. So now I'm going in with 6NWB. This is Demi Color uh, from Joyco, Demi Lumishine. Um, I work that at the base, level six. Now, her overall appearance on her hair was a level six when she came in to me, right? So I want to overall make her hair that natural warm tone. Uh, I want to bring all of that in. You don't want to just color the blonde, right? So what we would normally do in the salons, we just throw a, a toner to tone the lightened part of her hair. You want to bring the whole thing together. That's the whole purpose of making something really look nice. It's like putting in a really nice couch in your living room, but never painting the room, right? Um, you want to make sure that the whole thing goes together. The whole package goes together. So. I take 6NWB, paint that at the base. Then I take 8NWB and I paint that through her ends. That's the key to making sure that you really have a nice put together package for your client in the end result. So um, notice getting really in there, um, working with my comb to get the tangles out of the hair and then I paint that uh, toner on. Also notice it's on dry hair. I personally like to do it on dry hair. I feel like you get a better end result. You have more control. Some people like to do it at the sink. Do what you do best. But for me, this is what works uh, in this situation. So use that lightener, drive the hair where you want it to go, and then tone it so it looks beautiful in your end result and looks like it's all put together. So notice how beautiful those tones go together. You tone down that blonde to that, you know, crisp level eight. Uh, it doesn't need to be a 10. And then you have that level six, that warm, beautiful golden tone coming through there. The natural warm series from Joyco. Hope you guys like this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.